So the YouTube Red original series Cobra Kai debuts, I believe today, and this series is a continuation of the Karate Kid franchise. So with that in mind, today I'm gonna stop and rank all five Karate Kid movies from the worst to the best. Before I give you my ranking, go ahead and tell me down below in the comment section, how do you rank the Karate Kid movies? Which ones do you love? Which ones do you hate? And this is one of those franchises that has some really high highs, really low lows, and people have some very strong feelings on that remake that they did a few years back. So with that said, before I dive into my ranking of them, I'm going to tell you how the critics rank them, looking at Rotten Tomatoes. So coming in in last place with just 7% is the next Karate Kid. In fourth place is the Karate Kid Part 3 with 16%. Jumping up from there in third place is the Karate Kid Part 2 with 42%. Another big leap is the Karate Kid remake from 2010 with 65%. And once again, another big leap to the original Karate Kid with 88%. So as you look at those scores, there's a huge spectrum in there when you got the lowest one with 7% and then the highest one all the way up at 88%. This franchise is kind of all over the place. So with that said, let's get started. Coming in in last place for me is The Karate Kid Part 3. Now, to be fair, this is a movie I actually watch way too often. People ask me all the time, what are your guilty pleasure movies? I need to start telling them Karate Kid Part 3 is a guilty pleasure movie for me. Besides the original Karate Kid, this is the one that I have watched the most. There's just a certain dopey charm to it that I find it very watchable. The main villain it, Thomas Ian Griffith, as the, I guess, person that worked with our evil sensei from the first film in Vietnam, is so over the top and so insane, it's hard to not kind of like the performance. Like there's scenes where he's like, yeah, I like it, man, I like it. It just starts screaming. I mean, everything is just dialed up to cocaine levels off the charts in this movie. There's a scene where he's in a bathtub and he's like, just dump the toxic waste in Borneo. They don't know what toxic sludge is in Borneo. Ha 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 ha. And then, I mean, just the whole movie's like that. The, the plot of it revolves around our sensei from the previous one, Chris, losing the dojo because he lost the tournament and then tried to choke out his student in the parking lot. And so then this protege of him from Vietnam, who's now super duper rich, decides to exact revenge on the people that cost him his franchise by making him fight in the competition again and hiring a bad boy to force him to sign up. I mean, like, this is the weirdest, dumbest, dopiest plot imaginable for a movie, but I kind of dig it. Uh, Ralph Macchio is Daniel LaRusso has never been more obnoxious than he is in this movie. Like, he decides to start a business for Mr. Miyagi, so he trades in his college fund to start a business and pay the mortgage for a company forcing Mr. Miyagi to go into business, starts digging up trees of his that he planted, Mr. Miyagi planted years ago. Just insanity, the lack of logic in this movie. It, it was it, re-watching it. I was just like, I can't believe that this is the actual plot of this movie. The same creative team that created the original created this movie. At the same time, I kind of love this movie, but in a guilty pleasure kind of way. So it's very easily in last place. Coming in in fourth place is going to be the next Karate Kid. So they decided to continue the franchise without Daniel LaRusso, without Ralph Macchio, and they decided to do the gender swap thing. They thought they'd have some fun and it changed the dynamics. And it's true, there's some definitely some changes of pace in what you can do in having Mr. Miyagi working with a high school girl rather than a high school guy. And the person they cast is Hilary Swank. So this is an Oscar level actress not too far before she started getting into the Oscar conversation and getting nominated for awards and things like that. And so she actually brings some acting chops to it. And then on the evil gang of the, the plot involves the student police force at a high school that has an evil instructor. One of the guys in that group is Walton Goggins, who's another world-class talent. So the movie has better actors in it than you would think for what the movie is and what its legacy is. And that kind of elevates the material a little bit. The central plot in many ways is a weird rehash of sorts of the original with some changes of, you know, it's not an evil dojo, it's an evil student police force at the school. And, you know, there's a little bit more of a field trip element to what Mr. Miyagi does with the girl and all of it. There's a certain 
certain charm to it. Actually, talking with my wife, she said that this was her favorite of the bunch, or maybe her second favorite of the bunch, because she probably likes the remake the most out of all of them, just for modern storytelling type reasons. But um, yeah, it's it's a, not a great movie. It's very much kind of like Karate Kid Part 3. There's an extreme amount of dopiness in the plot to it and absurd levels of villainy for characters that shouldn't be this sociopathic given the nature of the story that they're telling. I mean, the evil instructor of this police force goes full mustache twirling, ha ha ha, kill them type behavior in the third act of this movie that's just bizarre because he's a He's like a teacher at a school, so it makes no sense at all. But there's still some fun to be had here. Mr. Miyagi is, of course, great still in the film. Overall, I was actually pretty surprised to see. It's only at 7% on Rotten Tomatoes and significantly lower than Karate Kid Part 3. There's certain uh, competency to the way it was made, so I thought it was actually going to be a little bit higher. Coming in in third place is going to be The Karate Kid Part 2. This is an interesting movie because I grew up watching it and, you know, not knowing any better to just thinking this was the greatest movie ever it's more karate kid and they go to japan and he's training and then the stakes are higher in the third act re-watching it certain elements certainly don't hold up all that well key phrase with this franchise is there's a lot of dopiness in the sequels and so once again that's true here and there's this plot line where there's this 50 year old rivalry or 40 year old rivalry between mr miyagi and one of his friends growing up related to a girl and for some reason this translates to the friend's nephew i believe who it is and he's just so evil and angry and malicious in his behavior that he's hard to take seriously in the movie because as it progresses, he just gets crazier and crazier. And he's just so one note in his behavior that it's a little bit difficult to take seriously, especially because the movie... It, it captures the ambiance and the tone and kind of it, it still kind of has the magic of the original Karate Kid movie in the movie. And there's these moments that just feel right. But the plot is way more ludicrous and it kind of highlights the, how ludicrous it is because the strong moments are kind of still so strong in it. There's also some oddities in this one, kind of some big plot points in the original Karate Kid involved Mr. Miyagi having a wife and a kid. And then you go into this movie and it's talking about this other long lost love that's kind of central to the plot. And it seemed like a bit of it, like the pieces didn't quite fit together quite right in the way it all played out. But overall, this is an enjoyable movie. It's a good, not great sequel to the second one. Got a great score and soundtrack to it. Uh, we did it all for the glory of love. That's a classic one in there. Um, a lot of iconic moments in this. Like I said, it has the magic. It's st just not quite on that level of greatness as the original. Our runner up is The Karate Kid 2010, the remake. I actually think this is a very good remake of the original Karate Kid, and it's only two or three changes away from being a great remake of the original. Granted, these are some pretty big oopsies that they made with the film, but it was very close to being a solid film. And for me, when I just think about who would be a great new version of Mr. Miyagi, in the year 2010, Jackie Chan is a great choice. And while Japan and karate is obviously the mechanism that they, the packaging that they chose for the original Karate Kid, it's not really a karate centric story. It's a story about kind of a, a man in need of a son and a son in need of a father. And it's, it's that type of story that uses karate. And so the idea that they would translate that into China and make the change so that it's Kung Fu instead of karate, that's kind of a superficial change in my mind. And so the idea you go with Jackie Chan, change locations, change the martial art, all that works. Now this leads to this silly problem of it's called the Karate Kid and he's learning Kung Fu. So I agree, I, all that stuff, that's pretty superficial to me. That doesn't really bother me. But I mean, Jackie Chan is great in this movie. I mean, it's, it's some of his best stuff because he, he gets to be fun Jackie Chan. Now to state the obvious, I mean, he's a way better martial artist than Pat Morita could ever be. And in this movie, he actually gets to be an actor too. So you kind of get all the facets of Jackie Chan. For that matter, I don't think that Jaden Smith did a bad job. I think he was perfectly fine in this movie. I wouldn't be like, he's amazing. But in a lot of ways, he's got a more natural charisma to him than Ralph. 
Ralph Macchio does. Ralph Macchio has an energy to him. He has a screen presence. He captures your attention, but he, he's kind of in an obnoxious kind of way in the way he does that, whereas Jaden Smith has, well, he's Will Smith's son, and so you can kind of see that in his behavior. And he's also a far more competent athlete than Ralph Macchio was in the original one. And that kind of helps in certain aspects in the film that you can buy him as someone that would win a martial arts tournament in the film. So a lot of the elements to it, I think, just fit into place really nicely. So there's a few things about this movie that hold it back from being a great remake. The first one is it's like 20 minutes too long. The second one is because they were getting, the movie was a Jaden Smith nepotism film, it's, they had to change the age bracket to where he was at, which is middle school, which does not work for the movie that they were making, which is this kind of territorial guys wanting, being protective over girls, machoism, physicality, all sorts of stuff that it's much more high school type behavior. And then the way they decided to visualize that in the film is it's a lot more violent of a film than the original Karate Kid which when you do that with middle schoolers is, is very off-putting to watch. And if they just could have waited till Jaden was 16 years old or not cast Jaden, the movie would have been significantly better because it would have had a lot more credibility. The style of martial arts they're doing, the brutality and what happens, just the themes going on throughout the relationships of it, it doesn't work with middle schoolers. And so that was, that's the biggest fault in this movie to me. But of course, in first place, I've got to go with one of my favorite movies from my childhood, the original Karate Kid. In certain ways, people call this a sports movie. Maybe they call it a martial arts movie, but like all great sports movies, it's not really about the sport. It is about a relationship between a boy who doesn't have a father and a father who does not have a son and the relationship, the bond that they form between each other, learning to overcome their, the gaps in their lives and moving forward. Uh, this is kind of one of those movies that just feels special in what they were able to capture in it. They got the director of the original Rocky to direct this one. And of course he's great with some of these relationships with sports movies and making them about more than just the sport. And you see that once again here, you got Bill Conti, the guy that scored the original Rocky film, scoring this film and the amazing music in it. The soundtrack with the songs mixed back. Some of the songs in this movie, are very dated, but the score itself is just phenomenal and what they were able to tackle. And they take material that's kind of cheesy in certain ways about the idea of an evil dojo, an evil sensei being the bully to a kid, and they craft a story that's just so earnest in the way it handles the material that you buy it. Like you just buy into this story of this kid that's getting bullied, getting picked on, and is just seeking something out. He finds Mr. Miyagi, and it's this guy that's lonely, that has something he's needed to pass on, wanted to pass along and never had the person and finally finds a, a good enough reason to pass this along to someone. And just, it's a movie that's so well crafted about these relationships, high school politics, growing up, and then surrogate father-son relationships that you see in this movie, all of it building towards this climax that um, it doesn't need to be super big and flashy, like the martial arts in, in the original uh, Karate Kid movies is is not, not a amazing stuff. The choreography that they went with in these movies and Ralph Macchio is not the actual Karate Kid and his abilities and all of this. But so they, they are able to craft through the story. You care about the characters. The evil sensei and Johnny are, are made in a way that you're angry at them at the way they're behaving and the absurdity of their actions. So you care about the little victories, the little ways they wrong him and sweeping the leg and fix it, like intentionally trying to hurt him in the fight before. All those little elements make you care that when you get to this moment, and he does the crane, the famous crane kick, kicks him in the face and wins and earns the respect of these people. It works. It's so emotionally satisfying because they built towards it. And right before kind of when, when um, Daniel's almost going to drop out, and there's this dialogue. He's like, Mr. Miyagi, do the trick on me, rub the hands together and fix my leg so I can go in there and fight these guys like they're going to think they won. They cheated to win, but they're going to win. I need to prove it to these guys. I need to prove it to myself. And it just so captures the themes of the movie and everything. Just such a wonderful payoff. This is, I, this is one of those movies that I'd probably watch like every single month if my wife would 
you know, become extremely angry with me if I did that. Um, I've been watching it forever and it never gets old for me. Granted, it's a movie that is over 30 years old, so the pacing of it is very slow. So if you're kind of a high schooler now and you watch this one, it'll feel just sluggish in its pace and the way things play out. But uh, it, it, if you can get used to it, if you can get used to that pacing, it is worth it. So how about you? How do you rank the Karate Kid movies? Which ones do you love? Which ones do you hate? Which ones are completely and totally insane? Let me know down below in the comment section. I'd love to have your take on these ones. And if you're new to my channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button. I do movie reviews, TV reviews, ranking videos. But the key thing is I don't want to just talk about movies and the Karate Kid. I want to talk about the Karate Kid with you. So join me down in the comment section. Let's have a lively discussion. And as always, thank you for watching.